three and welcome to today's math lesson. So we're going to get started straight away with our do now. And our do now is going to be looking at what a little bit of what we did yesterday. So your first task is going to be to complete the number lines with the missing fractions. So you are just going to need to write down the missing fractions. So remember in these two number lines that the denominator is the same. So you're just going to be looking at changing the numerator. So count the council on the number lines to help you fill in those missing numerators. Then below is our unit fraction. So num our numerator is one and our denominator is different, which means that you are just going to be looking at the denominator. And remember, the greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. So the smaller the piece of the fraction. Press pause to complete your do now, now. OK, here are your answers. So on our first number line, we are going to be increasing in fifths. So again, we're just going to keep our denominator the same, but we're just going to be adding on one each time. So one fifth, two fifths three-fifths, four-fifths, a whole, which also is five-fifths. The second one, one-eighth, two-eighth, three-eighth, four-eighth, five-eighth, six-eighth, seven-eighth. We are just counting all the parts here. So this is one part, two part, three part, four part, five part, six part, seven parts, the whole eight parts of eight. So you can just see here the numerator is increasing by one. Now let's look at the bottom where our denominator changes, but we're looking at unit fractions. So remember, the larger the denominator, the smaller the part of the fraction is. So our smallest part here is one twelfth, because imagine you've got a cake and you are going to share it between 12 people. Actually, I'm just going to show us a quick diagram on Two, three, one, two, three. I'm just going to draw a quick diagram of 12 versus, for example, a quarter. Right. Right. Here is my rather quick diagram. Not my be most beautiful. OK, here is a cake with 12 pieces. So it's divided into 12 equal parts. Here is a cake divided into four equal parts. I'm going to give you one piece of this cake and one piece of this cake. I'm going to give you a twelfth here and a quarter here. Which one is a smaller piece of cake? Look at the picture. This is a smaller piece than that piece. You're going to get less cake if you share it with 12 people, well, 11 people, including yourself, than if you're going to share it with three other people. Greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. Greater the denominator, smaller the fraction. I hope that is now clear for all of us. Right, moving on to our lesson today, we're going to be looking at equivalent fractions, equivalent fractions. So equivalent fractions. Here are today's star words. My turn, your turn. Fraction. Equivalent. Equal to. Whole. And part. Well done. Quick recap. Fractions are part of a whole. Fractions are part of a whole. So here we can see we have our pizza, which is split into eight equal parts. Eight equal parts. Then you have one part which has been eaten. So we could say, we can say that one eighth of the pizza has been eaten, one part out of eight. Here, I have a bag of sweets where there are 16 sweets. And they are split into four equal groups. I can see that I've eaten one group out of four, one quarter. And here, is our fraction wall, which we've been looking at. And this has got our whole here, and then we can see it's divided into lots of different other parts. So that is fraction. Unit fractions, when the numerator is one, 
when the numerator is 1. With unit fraction, the greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. How many parts are here? How many parts altogether? 1, 2, 3, 4. One part is shaded out of 4, 1 quarter. How many parts here? 1, 2, 2. A half is shaded. The greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. You get less. Less pie, pizza, cake, chocolate, whatever, if, if you only get a quarter and you get more if you get a half. Equal to, it means equivalent, means the same as. You can see on all these different pictures, things are equal. They are meaning the same thing. So we can see here, this circle is split into half. And you can see this circle is split into four pieces, but two pieces are shaded. So this is something we'll be looking at today. These rocks, even though they've got slightly different piles on each side, they are balanced, which means they're the same thing. And two add two is equal to four. If we put two and two together, it is the same as four. Just for example, we could say six take away two is the same as four. What can you see here? How many yellow bars are equal to one blue bar? How many blue bars are equal to one red bar? Have a look, have a think. What can you see? Maybe press pause, because we're gonna go straight on. Okay, how many yellow bars are equal to one blue bar? Here are my blue bars. I can see one, two, Two yellow bars are equal to one blue bar. How many blue bars are equal to one red bar? One, two, you can see them side by side here, side by side here, and they equal one red bar. So we can actually look at this in a different way. This can be viewed as our whole. And each there are how many parts here? There are one, two parts here. These are a half. Underneath it here, I have one, two, three, four parts. So my denominator is four, which means each part is a quarter. This clearly shows something interesting. Hmm, what do you think it shows? I think it shows that Two halves make up a whole. I think it shows that four quarters make up a whole. Do you agree? Should we take a look and see? One half, two, one whole, two halves, four quarters are all equivalent. They are all equivalent. Let's take a look at this fraction wall. What fractions are, are equal to one whole? What fractions are equal to one whole? Maybe pause, pause the video and have a quick think. Okay, what fractions are equal to one whole? So our whole is here at the top. This is our whole. Our whole is one. We've done this before. How many blue bars do we need to add together to get one? We need to add two, two, two bars. So two parts, of, two parts of a whole, which is divided into two, equals one. What about here? We can see that there's one, two, three, four parts. My whole is divided into four parts. If I put all of them together, if I put all of these ones together, it's going to equal my whole. You can see they're exactly the same length. So that is what we, we would say four fourths. Then looking at back, but at the bottom here, this is a fraction which is divided into eight equal parts. Eight equal parts. So if I have all eight parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all eight equal parts, it is going to add up to a whole. And that would be 
eight parts of eight. A couple of questions here for you just to have a think about, maybe press pause once we've read them and to think about because they're going to help you with your in the kind of work you're going to be doing for your independent task. How many eighths are equal to one half? How many eighths are equal to one half? How many e quarters equal one whole? How many quarters equal one whole? How many quarters are equivalent to one to two eighths? Apologies. How many quarters are equivalent to two eighths? So press pause and have a think about those questions. Right, well, let's hope you press pause and thought about those questions. So how many eighths are equal to a half? So here we have our half. So you can just think to yourself, how many green bars are equal to one blue bar? How many green boxes are equal to one blue box? Which is, in this case, how many, eight, how many eights are equal to one half? I can see that one, two, three, four green boxes. So four eights are equal to one blue box, which is a half. So we can just write here, four eights. How many quarters equal one whole? Mm. So I can have a look at my whole here, which is red, and my quarters, which I know are my yellow blocks. One, two, three, four. How many quarters equal one whole? They, it is four quarters equal one whole. And finally, how many quarters are equivalent to two eighths? How many quarters are equivalent to two eighths? So what that is asking is, how many green blocks do we need to make a yellow block? How many eighths do we need to make a quarter? I can see here is my yellow box and here are my green box. I can see I can go one, two, two eighths is the same as a quarter. You might start seeing some patterns with the, the relationship between the denominators and the numerators. So it'd be interesting to see if anyone can look at that and maybe explain it in their seesaw work. So your independent task, your independent task. Let's just make this a little bit bigger for you to all see before we, before I set you off onto your work. So you are going to be looking at these different images of a fraction wall and just completing the boxes. It's just going to be a really good idea of us being able to reinforce how the larger the denominator, the smaller the fraction, because you're going to see there's so much on these fraction walls. There's a challenge for you. And once you have finished that, please do not forget to do your daily arithmetic and upload those answers work to Seesaw. You remember you get your answers the day after and then make sure that you also have a go on timetable rock stars. I'm also going to be link uploading a a purple mash game on fractions which your teachers will be sharing in your briefings today. I hope you have a fantastic day. Let's see some great maths work on Seesaw. Bye everyone.